Hello and welcome to another edition of America Unveiled. I am Tom Hubbard. And I'm Suzanne Hubbard. Today we're in Roscoe, Georgia, visiting with Brown and Marie Powell of the Corral Facility. A therapeutic equine program for special needs children. So we're going to look around, so please join us. Oopsie daisy. Take a leg, any leg. There you go, buddy. Make a wish. <laughs> now we put the bolster in front. Yeah, where's the bolster? Oh, I didn't bring the bolster. Uh, <laughs> Let's go, Sam. <laughs> Owned by Brown and Marie Powell and operating out of the historic Sewell Barn in Roscoe, Georgia, Corral was formed in 1987 to provide therapeutic horseback riding facilities and instruction for mentally and physically challenged individuals, all in a safe and loving environment by offering participants exposure to a sense of freedom and achievement while enjoying the great outdoors. We are sitting here now with Brown and Marie Powell, the proprietors of Corral. Uh, Brown, Marie, thank you for joining us. And uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the place here and when you acquired it. <laughs> this is our, we, we bought the place in 1985 or six. And um, we started Corral, we organized in 1987. Right. I mean, did you purchase it for, did you have the Corral uh, model in mind and that's what made you purchase uh, an old barn like this? Or did you purchase the barn and go, what do I need to do with it? I did, that, that was more along the lines of, actually, I first bought over on Sewell Mill Road. I bought a house in seven acres in 1978. Mm -hmm. And uh, Marie and I got married in 1980. And we both had, well, she had horses. I never had owned a horse until I met her. And then in the course of about two years, I had about 10 or 15 different <laughs> horses. But we had two horses that we kept at her mother's house over on Macedonia Road. Right. And um, we were out one day and saw this old barn, and it was grown up. You couldn't even hardly see the barn from yeah. the road. The pasture was all grown up. And we I walked in and looked around. I saw it was some fence up, so I found out who, who it belonged to and called him and asked him if I could rent the pasture to put the horses in. And so we did. And that lasted about a year or so, but the fences were in terrible shape and we just had access to the back of the barn and we moved them back to Marie's mother's house. Mm -hmm. But then the next year we decided it's nicer to have them up here close to where we live. So I called him back. Bruce Woods was the guy that owned the place <clears throat> and said, we'd like to rent the pasture again. And he said, he was in the rental house business and this was just storage. It was just full of junk. Right. And uh, he said, I'm, I'm selling out moving to Florida. I'll just sell you the barn. So after a long conversation and I didn't have, and I told him right up front, said I can't, I can't afford to buy that barn, but. But you were able to manage. He put a good price on it and offered to finance it. So when I hung up the phone, Marie said, well, did, did we were able to rent the barn? And I said, well, I think we just bought it. <laughs> so, so how long did you, did you have the, the barn before you decided to? At the time I was volunteering in another program in Palmetto, a similar program. Um, I started up there in about 79 or 80. Well, that's kind of what I was leading into. Um, I mean, working uh, with disabled children and all is very uh, commendable and laudable, and not many people uh, really put the time into it as they should these days because there's a lot of special needs uh, children out there. So yes. was it a, a passion that you had from early on and you got into this when you purchased the barn or is it something that you got into later in life because of a particular incident or some kind of influence? Everybody asks, do we have a special needs child? They just assume that we had a special needs child as a reason we started this program, but we don't. We only have one, one child and, and there, there are no, well, everybody's special needs. Right. <laughs> you know, everybody has special needs, but, but um, he wasn't. He wasn't in special ed. Um, my mother taught children to church and kept the nursery at First Baptist Church for 30 years. 
And so every every Wednesday night and every Sunday night we were at church and I was with her and it was several special needs kids and she had a special affinity for them and really spent a lot of time with them and so it basically the love of children came from my mother. <laughs> right. And uh, and then I just it was an article in the New York Times Herald about this program in Palmetto that was you know it was a therapeutic writing program and it, and I was interested and went up there. And so I went on Saturdays for about four or five years. And in the meantime, we acquired the barn. And then about the time we got everything cleaned up and fixed up <clears throat> that program, she had some health is issues. She had a stroke, and uh, they closed that program down. So there were several, a couple of groups from Newnan that were going up there. Susan Hyde was a special ed teacher, and right. she was taking her class up there. And so we just got a group together and organized. In um, I think '86 was when we organized. Mm -hmm. Now, Marie, did you just follow along with his guidance, or? Well, I was at the time I was working at a florist, Murphy Florist, which back then it was a eight day a week job. So I was never off on Saturdays, and he was off on Saturdays, and he would go up and you know volunteer and come home talking about the kids and how great it was. I've always loved horses. Mm -hmm. Always. Right. I was one of those little girls who always wanted a horse, and. Finally got one when I was 13 and hadn't been without one since. When I met Brown, I converted him, <laughs> and we've had horses ever since. So there's a connection there. And my love of the horses and his connection with the kids, it just matched. It just right. made, a, made a good match. <laughs> and then when my child came along, I quit work. And then, you know, when we bought the barn, I said, what are we going to do with this big old barn? And he said, well, we could have our own therapy program here. And I said, how are we going to do that? We both work full time, but the whole thing, it was a God thing. It just worked out. I'm sure it was quite arduous in the beginning, getting it off the ground and finding uh, supporters, right? We had some good support because we were working. Kelly Abercrombie was the recreational therapist for the county, and she took kids from the school system, special needs kids for Special Olympics, mm -hmm. up to this other program. So. She was real excited when we talked about, you know, starting a program here. Being right. A lot closer, more convenient for her, too. And um, we were just, we got some like-minded people together that said, hey, this is what we want to do, with the goal intended that we wanted to do this as a nonprofit, and we didn't want to charge any of our riders. We wanted it to be, you know, no expense, because horses are expensive. They're very expensive. Um, yeah. And you got to have safe horses. Not every horse is a therapy horse. So our goal from the very beginning was we wanted to have a therapy program that kids could come out and enjoy the horses, ride the horses. We knew how special it was, the connection between you and a horse. But we wanted it to be where children that were special needs whose families might not could afford it right. because it's expensive taking riding lessons or doing anything else. Right. And you have to be in a safe environment with safe horses, um, volunteers that can help with the classes. Yeah, qualified yeah. people in general. Absolutely. Yeah. Our instructors have to be trained and certified to handle horses and special needs children. So it's, we have evolved. We joined an organization that was the only organization at the time, mm -hmm. which then was called NARA, the North American Riders with Handicapped Association, mm -hmm. which has now become PATH International. Right. So they've changed the name some, but um, they have guidelines and they have training and they have, you know, specific things, and it's all related to special needs, uh, physically and mentally challenged. So. That's we go great. by their guidelines, and um, we have training for our volunteers. Everybody needs to be volunteered. Now, you actually organized this as a 501c3 in what year? 1986, I believe, is when we... So it took did. about a year to get organized. Right. Um, Mitch Powell was um, an attorney, Brown's right. cousin, and right. so Mitch... That's convenient, that's it, yes. <laughs> if we got a banker... Um, we chose our board well. <laughs> we got a banker, on. we got a lawyer, and... You know, and some retired, <laughs> some retired special ed teachers, some right. te teachers that were working with kids. So we had, you know, what we were doing was a little bit different than most nonprofits. You know, we had right. to have, we wanted people that had some background that could help us, you know, get started. So. Well, I think it's, it's, it's a beautiful and wonderful, wonderful and laudable thing that you're doing because I, I don't know of any other um, organizations like you uh, that do this. And uh, to be in the back door here in Roscoe, Georgia, I mean, it's, it's, 
it's quite interesting uh, that you know not many people that you talk to are even familiar with it because people ask me oh you're going out what are you doing now I said oh we're doing a documentary on corral oh what's that and there there'd be two or three miles down the street and so you have remained somewhat incognito as they say but when we look around, there's a vast number of people, you know, that right. come here and is familiar with it. But it's almost like the quiet side Lying of the under community. under the radar. Yeah. And that's okay. We, because we're really limited on how many, <clears throat> you know, students we can um, um, take care of. And we're limited on volunteers and time. I bet. Um, so, you know, we do have to limit our classes. And we do keep a, a waiting list. Fortunately, we have a, another lady who had had her own program, and she's moved out close by now. And she's able; she's a special ed teacher, and she had, we helped her get her certification <clears throat> for instructing over here. Mm -hmm. So on my waiting list, I try to send them to her. I know her; I know she can take care of them and would be really good with the kids. So we try to keep our waiting list, keep it moving. But right. we do have a waiting list because we offer our services free. So. Everybody wants to be on that list, but right. we can only handle so many, and we So you have no problem obtaining volunteers? Um, we really don't. Volunteers kind of come and go, and during the week it's mostly uh, retired people. We have some homeschool um, students that will come during the week but to volunteer, but it's mostly retired people during the uh -huh. week. And sometimes it's hard during the week to get enough volunteers because... When you're talking about retired people, they got doctor's appointments, knee replacements. Oh, right. Replacements. Their own special needs. They're, we are. And most of them are coming out here to get their horse fix, as we call it. They had horses early on, and, you know, life got in the way. and um, Or they were, a lot of my retired uh, special ed teachers come back because they thoroughly enjoyed and saw how much the kids got out of it. So, But we, it, the volunteers always show up. They come and go. You know, they'll right. be here for a while and... And then you know, they dissipate. And yeah, recycle. and then more will come in. So we're constantly doing volunteer training, you know, getting putting people... Not everybody's a horse leader. Right. Not everybody is a sidewalker. So, you know, we find their niche, and once they find their niche, you know, they're hooked in. But my volunteers are great, and they're always here. If they're not going to be here, you know, they let me know. So if I have several that have got doctor's appointments, then I need to call somebody else in that day. Because it takes a lot of people to do. It takes sometimes three people for one child to ride the horse. Right. Well, it's nice so. that um, that you have that kind of loyalty in, in mentioning people riding a horse. Brown, you look like you were a, a, a large little kid having fun <laughs> yourself. Um, here a while a few minutes ago when we saw you out there on the back helping, aiding, and assisting the people uh, on the horses. So, I mean, you get a lot of fun out of this oh, yeah. yourself. And, and everybody says, well, why do you do it? And I said, well, I, I have as much fun as the kids do. So, <laughs> right. and, and, you know, fishing is a big part of, you know, the kids that come during the week after we finish riding, I take them down to the pond fishing, and then we have a little nature trail. Right. We just created a nature center, the old dairy barn across on the other yeah. side is a little nature center, so we'll go over there. but. Um, but it's, it must be nice for you to, to, to do something like this and get that much fun out of it yourself. Yes, and it's, it's very rewarding. And then you saw me back riding with the one child. You know, I get to ride sometimes. So um, it's uh, and really just the outdoor experience. A lot of these kids don't get to spend much time outside. So uh, being able to come out here and ride horses and dig worms. We've got a worm bed right over here. And Kids, lo kids and love to dig the they worms. Love to dig yeah, I, I saw some in a, in a sand bed playing uh, and they seemed to be having fun and then I saw one being taken out and tried to learn how to fish and he, he got the worms and he, he wanted to go fishing but he threw the worms in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them throw them in the pond. Some of them are scared to touch the um, last week we had a child and we have lots of first fish. A lot of them have never caught, of course, like most of them have never ridden a horse. So a lot's the first out here, right. <clears throat> and a little boy that he said, "You want to go fishing?" Yeah, and and his mama said he's never been fishing before, <laughs> and, and he had his. We put the worm on the hook. He was fascinated with that and fascinated with getting the worms. And then we, I don't think he had a clue about what was going to happen when that fish. I said, "You got a fish," and he picked it up and he just 
we're just shaking and hollering. <laughs> That's just exciting for me to see. I mean, that must know, be those, wonderful. Those reactions. Marie mentioned the, the number of children that come. So on Mondays and Thursdays, especially ed classes from Coward County School System come, and then every other Saturday, what is it now, about 22? 21, 22 students. 21, 22 students come on Saturday mornings to ride. So those are just individuals that bring their children. We have some from Fulton County, some from Carroll County, one from Troop County. So some of those come from, from a ways to come on Saturday mornings. So last year, I think we rode 178 different children. Wow, 178. And they ride in six, the school kids come in six week sessions and the Saturday kids come in nine, they have nine. They, we have a spring session and a fall session. Now all the years that you've been doing this, have you seen a consistency in the therapeutic value of horseback riding for special needs children? And, and it's different for every child. Each, each one gets something different. The, you know, um, autism is on the rise. Um, lots of children with autism. And they particularly relate to horses well. And particularly a lot of them that are nonverbal um, really seem to be a connection between them and the horse. And, Body language is a big deal with horses and it's a big deal with people. But we're not really aware of it. But when you have a nonverbal child, they can get their point across just like we yeah, can. Yeah, they can communicate. And they can communicate. <laughs> yeah, I never thought of that. It's, it's amazing the communication between the horse and the child. And a horse will, they might be terrified, the child might be terrified of a dog or the cat. The cat comes out, they're terrified. It's like they don't realize that horse is a big animal, but they've never had a bad experience with it. You know, they could have had a bad experience with a cat or a dog, but they don't realize that that horse, and it's always amazing to me how they are, some of them will be so fascinated looking in their eyes, fascinated with their feet. Right. I mean, it's, you know, they'll get honed in on something and that's what they're fascinated with. And it's, it's amazing to see the connection, but there's a, there's a big parallel there between horses, body language. It's, and it's I, I think there's yeah. a lot of things like that that we can't comprehend scientifically and never yes. will. Right. You know, it's more like a supernatural type connection, right. the energy. And, and to me, that's extremely fascinating. And I'm sure you see that all the time here. We do. Energy is a big deal. And, and learning to read these children, particularly those that have fear issues, <clears throat> you really have to read their energy and know what you can, how far you can ask them to go and what you can ask them to do. You'll see tomorrow, um, we've got a child that this will be his fourth time to come. And last week, we finally got him on a horse. He was just... And he was a, a big kid and really active, so you have to be careful. Some of the smaller kids, they just put them up, <laughs> pick them up, put them on the horse, and once they start moving, it's all good. But those that are, might be jumpers or runners, <laughs> we want to, we want it to be their, you know, this decision to get on the horse. Now, Brown and Marie, it obviously takes, as you mentioned earlier, uh, briefly, a vast amount of money to run an establishment like this. I mean. The food for the horses, for one, and the care and the veterinary bills. And obviously, you're a 501c3 organization, so I would like to uh, for you to tell everybody how they can donate and how they can contact you, you know, to, to help and support what you're doing. Here. We have a website, and it's corraltrc.org, mm -hmm. and we have um, all kind of information on our website about um, donating, we have a sponsor a horse program, um, and you talk about our budget. We own the property. We look after, take care of everything. We have no paid staff. Everyone right. is volunteer. Um, my instructors are paid for instruction time only. Everything else is volunteer. So there, we keep up with the volunteer hours, and it takes a lot of hours to do. Yeah, right. You know, getting the horses ready before class, after class, and everything else. So. Um, and once in a while we have some this year we've not been very fortunate we've had some big vet bills for some of our older horses this year but they've all turned out real good and I always look at it can I buy a horse and replace a horse for what it takes for my vet bill so you know we've got two horses that we've had at Auburn this year so sometimes you have unexpected you know expenses but um, there again when you one day we hope to get to the point that we can um, retire and maybe have someone, a paid director, right. someone that would look after and do what we do. Um, I mean, it really is really hard to find 
people, uh, when you have a personal passion like that, I'm sure it's very hard to find uh, people that support and, and share the same degree of passion as that. It would be hard for you to turn loose. Oh, well, we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. never turn loose completely. No, no way. But, um, you know, we're, we're getting on up in those ages. And, you know, I had a little wrist injury this year that's really knocked me back for a while. And you realize you can't do everything you used to do. So you got to, you know, and asking for help is sometimes hard to do. But. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it is. It is. So I'm used to doing it myself, and all of a sudden i got to help, you know, ask for help. So, um, and we realize that, you know, sustainability is a big deal with a program like this. We want this to continue after we're not involved. So um, people bringing on people and training people, getting people involved. But it has to be, like I say, it has to be a passion and love. I know a lot of programs that have started that have tried to do this, but they thought they were going to make money and they were going to be able to pay, and you can't do it. Right. You know, it's, if you have tried to do this to make money, you've got to be a physical therapist, you've got to be able to charge insurance, you've got to be able to do all that, and we don't. I mean, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to feature you here on America Unveiled, because of the of this sincere, honest, old-fashioned dedication and passion that you have to doing something such as you do. To, to help people who are disadvantaged, so to speak. And, and I think it's wonderful, and I want more people to know about you and your place. And uh, Well, we definitely and get more out of it sometimes than that, the kids but, do. You know, so. What goes around comes around. So yeah. we've, we've been blessed throughout the years, and Marie and I both are, started Medicare this year, so. <laughs> All right. We're not young as we used to be, but. <laughs> right. Uh, and we keep saying that <clears throat> it, the right person will show up at the right time. We, yep. We've always trusted that God, we felt like this was something God called us to do, and we know that uh, if it's to continue, he'll still send somebody to take that place. But uh, in the meantime, we'll work till that happens. <laughs> yep. Well, Brown, Marie, we're going to go out and have a look at uh, some of the other activities, perhaps talk to some of the, the children and interact with them. And I thank you for taking time out of your busy day to sit down with us and, and talk to us like this. And uh, again, thank you. No well, we thank you. We and, thank, and thank you for, you for doing this. this documentary because I feel like it might, might help us, will help us in the future. Marie and her many volunteers spend time preparing the horses for the children to ride, paying close attention to each and every detail, ensuring that all proper preparations are made, always with safety forefront in mind, so as to alleviate any possibility of equipment failure, as well as ensuring the children have a comfortable and exciting experience during their time here. It appears that the horses enjoy all the attention as well. Perhaps they get as much fun out of their adventures as the children do. You can almost see the smile and contentment on their face. From grooming to saddling, attention to the smallest detail is always paramount in the preparation of each and every horse being used therapeutically for the children that day. All right, we're here with uh, Clarice and Holly, and the horse's name is? Duster. Duster is the most important one. Yes, yes. Now, is. are you two volunteers? Or yes, teachers? sir. Okay, both of you are volunteers. Right. Yes. That's great. And I used to be a special ed teacher, so I know right. how to relate with the kids, but I knew nothing about horses when I came here. Right. And uh, how long have you been uh, volunteering here? Probably a year. Yeah. And you? Uh, probably about eight months. Yeah. Probably. yeah. Holly was the one that told me about it. <laughs> And then she eventually came after me. Right. Well, you've been a special ed teacher. I can see what attracted you to yeah. to here. What about you? What? 
Um, I was looking for an opportunity to volunteer. I'm an empty nester. My All right. youngest just went off to school, college, and so I was looking for something that was fun and fulfilling. And also, I had a friend who had worked here before, and she really pushed me. Right. And she said, you really need to do this, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Right. And you go uh, how many uh, weeks? Two days a week I come. I come on Monday and Thursdays. And... Um, throughout the year? Yes, well they, they take a break on school holidays, so mm -hmm. they'll take a break over the summer and over Christmas. Right. But besides that, I'm here. Yeah. And uh, I've seen tons of volunteers out here today, as well as, you know, the teachers mm -hmm. and uh, some parents. Uh, what do you uh, think attracts so many volunteers to here? Um, because the reason we're doing this documentary is because there's not a lot of attention, it seems, nowadays, mm -hmm. like it was back 20 years ago, right. in special needs. Right. For some reason. So I'm hoping that things are getting revamped and more. <laughs> yes. More he has an itchy face. And so, what is your opinion of that? Um, I think deep down people have a good heart and they want right. to volunteer. It's just un unlike what you see on the news. Right. People do want to help. And a lot of people that are out here have horses. So they mm -hmm. know the need for volunteers, and so they just come on out here and volunteer. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to have horse knowledge right. to volunteer. Right. Um, it's been, I was a child the last time I really took any riding lessons or anything. Mm -hmm. What I found volunteering is that I really enjoy working with the kids. Right. And, and seeing their faces light up when they get on the horse for the first time or mm -hmm. them actually making the accomplishments of holding the reins right, sitting right. up straight, mm -hmm. doing the task. So that's real rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure everybody seems to say the same thing and and uh, I'm sure there's one particular, all the, you know, the time that you've both been doing it, even mm -hmm. if it's eight months, I'm sure one or two people have stood out and you went, wow, I can see the improvement almost oh, immediately. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And, yeah, we had one student that we couldn't even get her to put her helmet on. She would just run around the ring, and now she's totally putting her helmet on, doing the obstacle course, following directions. Mm -hmm. And you never would have thought that she would eventually get that far. And uh, as a special, the former special mm -hmm. needs uh, teacher, how uh, do you see this therapy comparing with other therapies? I think needs. animals, all animals with any kind of like an old person or with kids, mm -hmm. animals are just therapeutic because they're right. so relaxed and there's just a connection with animals. Um, some of the more profound cases, um, I've seen them work miracles, right. really. But then go from the first session where the child would not even get near the horse, just running around screaming, kicking, mm -hmm. and usually Brown will work with them. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I've seen them go from that to within a few weeks, in fact it happened last week, get a child on the horse mm -hmm. and actually getting him walking around the arena. As it, most of the special needs children adapt pretty readily and quickly, correct? Yeah. There are some that it, it takes a couple weeks, but by the end of their stint of time, right. we usually get them riding. I've never seen a kid not eventually ride. Even if it took a couple weeks for them to do it, they finally do it. So you always see... We always see success. We always see success. That's good. Which is very inspirational and That's nice to see. Yeah. Because I always thought that there was, you know, some kind of energy connection mm -hmm. between animals and people. Right, there I is. I mean, you, you might not be able to communicate, but that, that to me is, is a more higher ethereal level of communication yeah. that I think all... Uh, organic beings share right and uh, I think when someone is handicapped and they can't communicate in the traditional fashion that that's when you see that right. and that's why it's so profound and so amazing and all yeah inspiring when you see it because you can quickly see like you say two three weeks They're they go from it. from almost invalided condition to being mm -hmm. fairly supple and the kids that are really stiff and mm -hmm. they don't stretch or relax their muscles in a wheelchair, you put them on a horse and all of a sudden their legs relax and their arms relax mm -hmm. and they're not so stiff and rigid. So that there is a connection with them that it's just a very relaxing um, environment for them to be in. Now I've seen uh, some of you leading the horses around with the children on it and I've seen some on the back mm -hmm. holding the children. 
Yes. And so I guess you always, do some of them need assistance? Yes, some of them on? can't sit up straight on their own because they're used to being in a wheelchair and so they'll, they'll lean back. So they need Brown to be with them just to hold up their posture to be able to ride. The leaders normally are uh, horse people that have horses oh, and, right. and, and can work with the horses. Their main function is the horse, mm -hmm. um, keeping the horse doing what it's doing. The sidewalkers are there mainly for the kid, for right. the child, to help, right them. help with the tasks, try to encourage them to hold the reins, encourage them to sit up straight, um, and just kind of be there and push them a little bit sometimes. <laughs> and encourage them. But then know when to back off a little bit. Yeah. Well, just because they're special needs, it, it don't mean that they uh, should be exempt or need to be exempt right. from right. learning the day-to-day, the -day, you know, falls and scrapes that yeah. everybody else has to do. Exactly. Yeah. So, well, anyway, I'll let you get back to it. You got your okay. horse settled up. Yep. And uh, thank you for taking your time and chatting with us. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are you a teacher? I am. Mm -hmm. You are? Totally. Special education teacher at Eastside Elementary. What have you found was most beneficial about the program for, with your daughter? It Honestly, it provided a lot of um, support for occupational therapy. You can do a lot of occupational therapy on the horse, like for hypotherapy. And this type of recreational therapy is just kind of more relaxed. And the environment's perfect, so it provided a calming environment for for good um, motor skill training and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Have you found that, that other children with other special needs have benefited from the program as well? Absolutely. It not only provides um, benefits for things like motor skills, but it, the confidence that you see when the children get on the horse. Right. Like Andrew um, was very hesitant to get on the horse at first, mm -hmm. and now his posture is just perfect. He's riding well. That's Everything's right. doing great with you. Okay. Hey. hey, Andrew. Hey. What do you think about the program? Do you like riding the horses? Yeah. That's great. How long have you been coming? Um, uh, like a while. A while? Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. you've been coming for how many weeks mm -hmm. now? About three, two or three? This is our third week. This Fourth week? Yeah. Time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it does. This school year's just gone by so quickly. Um, is, so, during the three weeks, did you have any apprehension when you first met the horses? Were you scared to get on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were scared. I mean, they're so big, aren't they? Yeah, they're kind of intimidating at first. Gabe, do you like horses? Do you like horses? Horses? Yes. Yeah, horses. Yes. Yes. Yes, horses. You know, my daughter. A lot of times, um, she had problems interacting with people, mm -hmm. and you know she didn't understand them, and mm -hmm. you know she interacted more comfortably with animals. Have you found mm -hmm. that a lot of the kids interact once they get over the initial intimidation with mm -hmm. the horse? Do you feel that they mm -hmm. interact better? I do. I do. Yeah. I think there's more. There's a greater comfort level there. Yeah, it seems like... And acceptance. Yeah, it mm -hmm. seems like they, they have a special bond eventually. Yeah. You know, when they get to know each other. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, have you... What's your favorite horse to ride? Um... I don't know. You don't know? You like all of them? Um, yeah. Do you go fishing too? Have you caught any fish? He's an excellent fisherman. That's great. Yeah. I, I'm kind of scared of the fish. You know, they splash and <laughs> get water all over you and they smell. <laughs> but you like it, so you're a good fisherman. Well, might have to give me some pointers. <laughs> How, what do you do to catch a fish? Um, get off the hook. Oh. See, that's the scary thing. Do you hold it? Oh, wow. You're brave. You're a brave man. He does great. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you talking to me. And thank you for telling me about your experiences. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would like to say? 
Well, Marie and Brown out here at Corral have just been amazing for not only the Coweta County students in the special ed department, but they also provide um, writing classes for any special needs child that would like to write every Saturday. Um, this is a nonprofit organization. They're funded by the United Way and donations primarily. So um, the community has just been extremely supportive of Corral and um, it's just a wonderful place to be. That's great. Thank you so much You're for welcome. your time. Absolutely. Thank you too. Hello, we're here with Kim today at the Corral. Uh, Kim, hello, how are you? Hey, good. Now what is your function here? I mean, I've seen a lot of uh, parents here today, teachers, volunteers, okay. Yeah. and I was told that you've been here quite a while. Yes, I've been coming for 13 years. Um, I'm a TA in a self-contained, severe and profound classroom. Mm -hmm. And so we bring our students out um, for a six-week session every year, um, mm -hmm. and we just work on their balance. Um, a lot of times we've had some students that their legs and their bodies so tight from cerebral palsy wow. that we can just watch how their bodies just relax and that they can really enjoy and get a good stretch while they're writing. And then that makes it better in the classroom so we can right. maneuver them and, and do the um, different therapies that we need to do with them. Right. And how many years have you been? 13. 13. This is our 13th year. Wow. Yeah. And so, so hoping many more. And so out of a six-week um, period that you uh -huh. come, what differences, I mean, you listed some of the things that you obviously see, mm -hmm. but, I mean, do you see a rapid progression in improvement over a six-week yes. period? Or is it accumulation of year after year? Well, um, some of our, well, because we keep our students from five years old to 12, mm -hmm. we get to see a big progress. Like um, last year, two of our students had a very hard time writing, but through just maturing mm -hmm. and growing a little more, this year they're able to ride, which has been huge, That's huge great. for us, because we don't like them to miss out on it. Right. Um, and so we're constantly trying to figure it out. Now I do, in the classroom, if they're struggling with balance and things, mm -hmm. I have a saddle and a, um, a swing that I'll, Really? Contraption it up for them. So, so if we they can, can't come here, they enjoy Yeah, that. so we practice prior to getting here, so this can be a very successful event for them. Right. Yeah. And um, we've had students before that um, the average writer, it wasn't working for them. Mm -hmm. So we've talked to Marie and Brown, and we were like, we've got to figure out a way to get them on the horse. Mm -hmm. And we have laid them on their belly with their head face in the rear of the horse right. just so they can get that elongating stretch and right. just experience riding now, do, the you horse. Do, do you find that most enjoy the experience or do you have any that kind of fight well, the experience or are scared of it? Yeah, we've had some that, that were just timid, mm -hmm. um, but Brown and Marie have been so gracious to let me walk with them mm -hmm. until they get their comfort. Right. And then um, eventually it's a it's a sad day for me, but a good day for them that I can let go and let them go on their own. Right. And then we just see them just blossom and they just, they just do an excellent job writing. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had students before that um, it's just they're wild and crazy in the classroom, mm -hmm. but you get them out here on a horse and they're a different person. Wow, you notice a difference. Yes, just... it is huge. And like one of our students this morning, she was so excited mm -hmm. um, that she was getting to come and ride blue. Right. And this was the highlight of her day. And so she she's a different student because she's this is her first year and um, she's really enjoyed it. Yeah. And I can see her independence growing more and more because right. she's out here doing, you know, typical normal things. Yeah, and I'm sure you get just as much enjoyment out of it I as do. they do. I do. I love to see them succeed and grow up, and but man, sometimes it's hard to I'm let them sure. go, you know. I'm sure after spending so long yes. with them. Yes. And um, do you have a particular one that you've seen the greatest improvement on over um, the years you've been doing this? I shared with you um, a couple weeks ago, um, my little Haraya, she um, mm -hmm. she was my wild and crazy student, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, it just a lot just because of, of where she was at in life, mm -hmm. um, and she was so low, she just didn't have a lot of successes, and then she came and and we got the disciplines under control and mm -hmm. her behavior, 
she was riding a horse and she was by herself and she sat tall and she was beautiful and wow. and it was like one of the biggest success things that stories that we have of her for the four years that we had had her wow. so and you know unfortunately now some of the behaviors have come back and she's not able to ride so it kind of breaks my heart right because we we worked so hard to get her there and and now she you know just changes in life I understand. you know but yeah. That's the way it's, life is you know, in general. Yeah, know? and but the the good thing about Corral is probably ninety percent of our students wouldn't be able to come out and ride a horse ever in their lifetime. Right. You know, and especially with some of their disabilities, they wouldn't be able to um, just because of you know some of the parents or some other somebody other than this group of people would well, think that they're too fragile. Right. You know, a lot of people do think that for yeah. some reason about special needs children yeah. and, and they're not fragile at no. all. They're people just like anybody yeah. else. They just have needs that are special. Exactly. And, and they're not going to break. No. And the no. horse is going to make them a whole lot more flexible and just something that they can do. And they need them. to learn the same, you know, roughs and yes. scrapes as anybody else. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, we treat them like they're regular, normal kids, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we adjust as we go. Yeah. yeah, I have seen an awful lot of volunteers out here. Is it is it been real typical to have? Yes, um, I think a lot of the people that come out during the daytime mm -hmm. um, are just a bunch of people that want to reach out to our type of students, mm -hmm. um, especially because they give up their Saturdays right. and come out and do it. Um, uh -huh. And then also a lot of the uh, Boy Scouts and other organizations in the county mm -hmm. help provide like the pavilion down there they uh the boy scouts built that in the fireplace because yes, nice. they needed a, a project and um and then the ramp that goes up into the tree house mm -hmm. you know so a lot of people just have a heart to come out here for these kids right. and and donate their time and their gifts and their skills right. but yeah volunteering is is probably 99 percent of what brown and marie rely on well, Kim, I appreciate you uh, taking time yes. away from the children and having a chat with us. And it's a very nice thing you do, and it's been nice thank to meet you. Thank you so much. And, uh, yes. Thank you very much. We are here with Jeanette today at Corral. She is a special education teacher. Yes. And what school? At Poplar Road Elementary. Poplar Road Elementary. Now, you have been doing this for how many years? This is my 13th year. Wow, 13 doing, years. Coming to Corral. You're the but I've been teaching person. for 23. You've been a teacher for 23 years. You yes. always taught special ed? I have, but I started at the alternative school. Mm -hmm. So I did the alternative um, middle high. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Poplar Road and did resource, which now would be more or less collab mm -hmm. until 13 years ago. And then I started in the severe profound. Wow. So what attracts you to special needs children? I just love special needs kids. I mean, mm -hmm. they... They're just so sweet. Their personalities. Mm -hmm. It's just like everybody else, but they're just like such a sweet population. Right. And I mean, you just can't help but to love them. Right. And been doing it as many years as you have, I'm sure you've seen the spectrum from from one end to the other as far as uh, uh, rapid ability to recover or not recover. Yes. And uh, the 13 years that you've been here. Have you noticed a significant difference in the children that are allowed to, to come here and to have this experience over the ones that you've taught in the past that's just been classroom only? Yes, actually I have. Because you can see the change. Like a lot of the kids, they've never really been on a horse or been near a horse mm -hmm. until we start coming to Corral. So you can see their change from the first week right. where you know they're scared, they're frightened, right. all the way to the sixth week where they're like really comfortable and and you can see the joy in their face as when we tell them when we're leaving the school oh we're going to corral so they're like very excited about that so in a very short period of time they look forward to this as a, they really do. a treat yes. sort of thing yeah then um the people the children that you've brought here you bring the children here how many uh weeks out of the year six weeks six weeks out of the yes. year and and it, it kind of depends because we have come in the early fall, winter around Christmas. Oh, so it's I never love, the same six it's weeks. It's never the same six weeks. And now spring. So, I mean, they get to come, you know, throughout the school year. I really wish I could do it more than six weeks. Right. Because the kids really enjoy it. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's some, it's some amazing uh, uh, therapy for the children, and it's really therapy for people like you who enjoy special needs children. And that's true. Yeah. But you're the second person I've talked to that said it's 13 years they've been a participant. So is that and that's, that's my TA, that's Kim. Ah, we, we started this started together. together yeah. mm -hmm. Right. And do you have a particular case that has been more successful than others that really stand out to you? Um, there was this one little girl. Mm -hmm. She, her muscles are extremely tight. Right. And so when we started, you know, we had to practically kind of lay her down on the horse mm -hmm. because she was just too tight. She would not relax mm -hmm. enough to ride the horse. And by the end of the six weeks, you could just see her body relax and she could sit up on the horse. She had a back rider because she could really sit by herself. Mm -hmm. But she had a back rider, but you could see her body relax and just calm, you know, and she smiled the yeah. entire time. So, I mean, you can see the difference. You could definitely tell. That's wonderful. Anyway, Janelle, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to speak with us and uh, taking yourself away from the children and all for these few minutes. It's been very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Rick. Hi. Hi. How long have you been volunteering here at Corral? Uh, got about two years now. Two years. Mm -hmm. What? How did you learn about the program? Uh, just word of mouth, actually. Mm -hmm. So by a friend or? By a neighbor. By a neighbor. Yep. What was your first immediate reaction when you first came? Well, I was just so impressed with uh, the patience and everybody's hard work and uh, mm -hmm. the level of quality of the, of the volunteers especially, and the horses are great for this kind of activity, so. Yeah. Um, I understand that y'all have to go through a certification class in order to become a volunteer. But I'm a former veterinarian, so I think uh, that helps in terms of my yes. knowledge of horses and uh, yes. so forth. So. so in your two years being here, have you come to really admire or befriend a certain horse? Um, no, actually I like all of them. I mean, well, they're, they're all, they're all nice. different and they all have different personalities, mm -hmm. but uh, in the end they're all just very gentle and that's what's important with these kids. That is true. I mean, I have just... I um, was blown away by their patience mm -hmm. and, you know, how they just, you know, seem to be so empathetic to mm -hmm. the children, mm -hmm. you know, that were their riders. Um, yeah, when you have little kids that are thrashing around sometimes on the saddle, it's, it's something that a lot of horses would not like. Right. But these horses just seem to take it in stride. I mean, that, to me, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, do you do any vetting here? No, no. I have, I've been retired from veterinary medicine for about 20 years now. Oh, wow. So, this is just something that you do mm -hmm. in your retirement. Yeah. That's well, great. I enjoy being around the horses and I mm -hmm. enjoy the activity here and I think it's just such a worthwhile uh, operation that uh, I just enjoy being a part of it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would like to say to those people out there that about the program, what you have found in your two years? Uh, just, I guess, just appreciate the fact that there's so much dedication by particularly Brown and, and Marie, but all the volunteers and uh, any support that people want to give to the organization, I'm sure would be uh, very, very helpful and, and appreciated. And it's, I can't imagine a more worthwhile, worthwhile cause than this. That's great. Thank you so much sure. for your time. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks. All right, bye-bye. All right, I'm standing here with Andy and Johnny. And uh, Andy, Johnny, um, you two are volunteers, correct? That's right. correct. And uh, Andy, how long have you volunteered? I've been coming about uh, 10, wow. 10 or 11 years. That's a good while on you, John. This is my second. Second year? Yeah. So uh, what inspires you to come out and work with special needs? Has there been uh, uh, just a fervor you've had towards special needs children, or is it's, it personal? Or? It's, uh, it's just the way I was raised. My mother uh, did special ed in school right. before special ed ever came along. Yeah, it wasn't even uh, called that then, it was, I think. It, yeah. it wasn't called in, but it wasn't, no, wasn't any such thing. But my mother uh, went to every school that we went to, her children. She had five of us and raised four of my cousins. 
And at Ever School, she worked with kids who had problems and uh, who uh, uh, needed things. She, she kept clothes closet for them if they didn't have clothes. And, right. and she, that was just instilled in us that we, we're, we wasn't put here just to sit around. Just to sit around and We were to, to do other, other things to help people. And you? Yeah, I just, I like the horses. Well, I've always liked the horses. Oh, yeah. I like working with these kids. It's, it's a rewarding thing to see when you can put a smile on their face. Oh, absolutely. Sometimes it looks like that's probably about the only time some of them's getting out, you know. Yeah. And being able to get out and enjoy the sunshine that a lot of us take for granted. It seems like there's a lot of enthusiasm with the children, and everybody I've spoken with so far uh, said that they can definitely see an improvement. And uh, I'm sure you guys have stories of your own. Oh, yeah. It, it, it never fails when I'm out in Newnham and, uh, you know, shopping or doing whatever. And, and when one of them see me, they'll come run and grab me. Of course, then you got to deal with mom and dad that hadn't been here and, and say, <laughs> right. I, wor I work with them at Corral. Right. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, I never thought of that. They'll, they'll come run, grab you around oh, yeah. the leg. Uh, so it, the, uh, the benefits to me, I get the, I get the biggest blessing. I know that right. it's a help to them. It helps them to understand that somebody cares mm -hmm. and that they, uh, that they can do things that uh, that normally they wouldn't know they could do. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen uh, uh, people, you know, it, it seems like when they get off the school bus, there there's an immediate excitement in their face oh, yeah. and the anticipation because I don't think some uh, of these people ever get out yeah. that much. They're in a classroom or in home or in front of a television and I think getting out here and breathing fresh oxygen and just the the smell and aroma of nature and animals is well, we therapeutic in stuff. itself. We got different things, you know. We do the fishing with them mm -hmm. and the horseback riding, and uh, there's a little worm bed down there. Some of them dig their own worms <laughs> sometime, and that's just amazing. It how that excite them. And uh, then Brown has a, a building across cross over on the other side of the pastures over there where he's got a lot of things they can go look at. Right. It's bird nests and everything else over there built out of horse hair. This little bird's built up. Out of the stray horse hair. Out of the stray horse hair around here. Yeah. And then we got ducks in the pond and stuff like that. But one of the amazing things is sometimes when a kid comes in and he's scared of that horse. Oh, right. Nothing to do with it. We'll not get on it. We'll scream and holler. Right. And sometimes Mr. Brown can get with them. And within a couple of sessions, they don't want to get off the horse then. That only takes two sessions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes sometimes one, it takes all six. Yeah, sometimes uh, it'll take all six. We have had them at the, be at the last session and get them on and they ride and then when you try to time to take them off, they cry. Now, they I've, off. I've heard some people just come for so many weeks out of the year, but being volunteers, I suppose you can do it all year round. Well, we, well, we, we only do it good. during the school. Uh, for now, they run the Saturday class, uh, some after school, but not long. Mm -hmm. But uh, but we 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 handle uh, on Mondays and Thursdays is when I volunteer mostly. Sometimes mm -hmm. if Marie calls and says she needs somebody on Saturday, I will come. But uh, Mondays and Thursdays, I I've, I've been since I started. I can I come at at seven o'clock or maybe a little before and get stalls ready, mm -hmm. get the horses in. Oh, there's a lot of preparation to this, oh, yeah, isn't there? And, and to get everything going. Johnny just retired a couple of years ago and I talked him into it, to coming and uh, he's, he's come and he found that uh, it's well worth the uh, effort. So he comes at seven o'clock and helps me. We did this show simply because there's not a lot of attention for special needs children, especially uh, organizations like this that help them. Is there anything you'd like to, to say to encourage more people to help aid and assist the special needs children? Or? I would I would encourage anybody that, that has some time on their hands and if they're not, uh, you know, if they're comfortable around a horse and want to help children to, to, uh, to see that somebody cares and, and there's, there's been times that we been short volunteers and it's and it makes it a little harder because you got to walk every round you don't get a break if if you got people out there that can do it and uh, and 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 can't come walk or can't come help mm -hmm. we can always take a donation yep. 
Uh, it costs right. a lot to feed these horses. It, it costs a lot for the vet bills. I'm sure uh, a vast amount, just the, the, like right. I said, the veterinary bills, and, the feed, and fortunately the labor is, is free. Yeah. If people uh, would just come, even though they may not want to get involved in the volunteer part, if right. they come and watch, sometimes after they've been mm -hmm. here a time or two, I would, I can do that. I'd right. be, and we have got them that way too. They soon come that way because it's when you see the smile on a kid's face that it's not normally there. Right. It changes you. It'll put a change in your heart. All right, Andy, Johnny, thank you very much for what you do, and thanks for uh, taking a bit of time out of your day and uh, talking with us. Appreciate it. The more you look around the grounds of this tranquil facility, in the heart of the Georgia countryside, with its rolling hills, its lake, its array of animals and wildlife, and its never-ending atmosphere of peace and harmony, you quickly begin to understand why people with all sorts of physical and mental challenges find solace, comfort, and a profound inspiration within themselves by participating in the activities here. As we depart, I hope you too have found a sense of joy and hope in spending a brief time here with us and that your inspiration also has been renewed.